Praise be Jesus Christ and forward with Mary. Happy and holy evening to all of you, dear children. For some time now, Saturday evening has no longer been the time for catechesis and reflection. However, I call the time we are living in the time of unveiling. And so you must keep your guard up. It is a moment in which the sides manifest themselves in their true identity. And Bergoglio expresses increasingly clearly what we alone have been uh, able to shout to the entire world for years, paying personally with excommunications and reductions of the lay state. And that is uh, stating out clearly that he is not the Pope and that he works on behalf of ecclesiastical Freemasonry to destroy the Catholic Church. This is the time of unveiling and so tonight I would like to reflect briefly, if you will, on what is happening at this moment within the Roman Catholic Church. The title is Bergoglio, as you know, you have seen it, we are on Facebook because we have been closed for two weeks on our YouTube channel right now, uh, it's quite significant. Bergoglio, Tuccio and Viganò, Chaos in Rome. In Rome, of course, not as a city, not as a metropolitan city, but in Rome as the seat of the Roman Catholic Church. So first, what I would like to say very clearly is the following. Who at this moment does not doubt that Dominitello was right? Raise your hands. That is, uh, I was the first to say that it, w that it would go uh, like this in the end. And when I said it, I, I do not say this because uh, I'm getting caught up in my own pride uh, and from emotional protagonism, but because now more than ever, the time has come to say it. They told me until recently that they, uh, that they called several people to the Secretariat of Rome, uh, Radio Domina Nostra who said, I'm not from the Little Remnant, but I would like, like to go deeper into this, into this uh, realm, because I realized that Dominutella was perhaps right. They still use the, the term maybe or perhaps. Perhaps he was right. Now I know that I, I am right, I knew, because I would never have put down my priestly Cossack. Let that be clear. Look, you're dealing with a priest. I said this to my enemies, and now I will say something important. Uh, which to a priest is sacrosanct. If I put down my habit in the closet is only because of a higher cause, which was that of having to tell the entire world, paying in person, that Bergoglio is not the Pope. He is a false Pope placed by Freemasonry and the world potentates through the St. Gallen Mafia for 11 years, shamefully in the complicit silence of all. He has sat as a usurper of the throne of Peter. The Freemasons have been trying for years to get there. With Bergoglio, the time has come uh, to do so. Uh, because Benedict XVI too had understood that the time had come to relegate himself to an impeded see. He could no longer rule as Pope. So I, uh, I refer you to Holy Scripture in the book of the prophet Jeremiah who says to distinguish well the good prophets from the false prophets. And he offers an irrefutable uh, basic rule which is the following. If what they preach is realized then they are true prophets. I think this is clear. And most of the time the prophets did not prophesy good things. But that, that is another story in the Old Testament. So it seems to me that for years I've been shouting the truth and I would not, I would not want, as I will tell you now, uh, to make a summary of the incredible surreal moment. Uh, I would speak of a surreal situation in Catholicism, Roman Catholicism, our exalted glorious Roman Catholicism, which passes through the glorious ranks of martyrs, holy virgins, holy monks, holy pastors in the church. I would not like uh, what we are experiencing to be interpreted as a surreal moment. You'll understand why. And as I was saying, I have a vague feeling that uh, they want to avoid opening their eyes uh, to what is happening in order not to agree with a certain Dominutella. I suspect this. I know. I suspect it. It is different. I, I feel it because I've noticed that now the so-called Unacum, which is those traditionalists who acknowledge Bergoglio as Pope, are in extreme difficulty. What fish can they catch here? What do they believe? What do they want to do? Really, tomorrow they stubbornly keep saying to each other, never mind whether the Mass is valid or invalid. That is not the point. The point is to say that we are in communion with Pope Francis. That is the point. Tomorrow, which is Sunday, the Christian communities of the United States say they're in communion with the Pope, with Pope Francis. How can they do this? How can they? It is a surreal situation because the sides are becoming clearer and clearer. If you do not believe me, go and take the live broadcast that I did in 2017 and in 2018. 
when a few years ago I announced what was going to happen. Of course, no one could believe me back then, but now it is for all the world to see. And the situation is surreal. I'll make a brief summary and then draw the conclusions for my speech, referring moreover uh, to a post published, I would say, within a certain uh, courage of freedom by Aldo Maria Valli, as I, as I will now tell you, of a man who says, to quote, Look, at this point, I want to be excommunicated. If that's the case, I want to be excommunicated by Pope Francis. End quote. So this already gives you the idea that Dominutella was the one who, more than anyone else, and before anyone else, had shown, I'm, I'm not grist, uh, making grist to my mill here, I don't care, what, what else do I have to gain? I lost everything. I was sent, I was sent to tell the truth, first with extreme freedom, to make people understand. You must expose yourself, you, you have to uh, get yourself out of hiding. You have to turn the world against you. Never has the proclamation of the truth been at a low price. We're at a low cost. So, the situation right now is unbelievable. It is, I said, uh, I would say the, the expression uh, I would use is more surreal. Let us, uh, let us summarize, because obviously we are on Facebook, uh, so we cannot, we, cannot, uh, we cannot go into too much. I don't want to, to do winged catechesis because we are not on YouTube. So let us see what the surreal situation is. Therefore, the so-called Pope Francis has signed a declaration of the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, signed by the Prefect of the Faith, the porno theologian Tucho Fernandez, in which it is foreseen, no longer the possibility, but now the reality, of blessing irregular couples and gay couples, all within at most 10 to 15 seconds, according to the clarifying note received a few weeks ago. Now look, uh, that is, I speak for myself, of course. I say, I mean this, uh, that is, uh, one thinks and says, uh, but this declaration, it is surreal. It is surreal because it openly goes against the depositum fide, against the word of God, therefore, the Word of God being the Norma Normans Non Normata, which is the Holy Bible, and, of course, against the tradition of the Church, therefore the ordinary and extraordinary magisterium, the Catechism, the documents of the Church, etc. It is not worth a, pre a pretext of saying it is pastoral charity. Giving a blessing means blessing, isn't it? So for the first time, in a way that is, I would say, superior and further with respect to uh, Modus Laetitia, that they have revealed themselves. And someone asked, uh, but, but Father, Father, didn't they realize, Tuccio and Bergoglio, that by doing so they would have faced this backlash? Look, the devil possesses them. People who are possessed by the devil, that are disturbed by Satan, are, are not balanced people. They are not people who know how to be balanced mentally. They are... Um, they're just unbalanced. Even when you, when you look at it from far away, you realize that the devil makes the pot but forgets to make the lid. So they wanted, in response to their father Satan, to publish this statement because who knows what steps they had to comply with of the, from orders on high of their syncretistic uh, global, uh, global elite and... Uh, uh, LGBT promoting lords to start this campaign, let's say a surreal one of blessing gay couples. And then half the world rose up and rebuffed them. I'm not making anything up here. That is, uh, I was also saying it last night at the end of the prayer of the Pioneers of the Rosary. You can find my reflection uh, that somewhat complements what I'm saying tonight. Practically half the world's episcopates are doing something that has never happened before in the 2000 year history of the church. That is that uh, more than half the world's uh, episcopates have rejected fiducia supplicans. I remember when I was studying the church history, Bishop uh, Dupanup, I don't remember if he was Belgian or French, he opposed the dogma of papal infallibility or something like that. Uh, well, I mean, there was a, let us say, already at that time, a ante eventum. Some modernists who 
uh, didn't like the proclamation or the dogma of the infallibility of the Pope, ex cathedra. Uh, although they, were count they could be counted on the fingertips of one hand. But nonetheless, it was an opposition. On the other hand, given the circumstances, if you think about it, that opposition there at that time was also uh, legitimate in the sense that the dogma had not yet been proclaimed. It was discussed. Uh, the opposers were allowed to say what they thought. And here today, it is completely idiotic. Uh, given the synodal leadership in the church, which makes us believe that it is the church of the synod, the church of dialogue. But in secret, the two of them decide, the porno theologian and the false pope. Understood? We are really at the level of a tragic comedy. They made us believe that these reforms were supposed to be born from, let's say, a synodal progression. Instead, in defiance of all the synodal fathers, or apart from someone who perhaps knew it, the two of them published it unexpectedly, because the two of them are Bergoglio and Tuccio. Uh, this declaration that opens... Uh, anyway, so when there was the dogma then, these bishops, a few of them, who at the first Vatican Council had opposed the dogma of papal infallibility, then later kept silent because the Pope wanted it. As they say, Roma locuta causa soluta. That is, Roma has spoken, the case is closed. Contrast to what is happening in the situation now. First, there's the declaration, and the declaration has a solemn qualification in the drafting of the documents of the congregation of the doctrine of the faith. And then more than half the world's episcopates are rebelling. Now, I don't want to go on too, too long on this. I don't want to bore you. Uh, I would like to tell you that um, I'd like to summarize within half an hour. Nonetheless, half the world's episcopates, more than half the world's episcopates are now moving in the direction of disapproval. But it is only a disapproval. For example, the entire African episcopate is not only disapproving of the blessing of gay couples, it is something more. That it is, uh, it is one thing to say we do not agree, it is one thing to say, uh, to say that. Therefore, we forbid our priests to bless gay couples. That is, it means that African, the, the African Episcopate does not care what Rome says. And that has never happened. Dear children, look, at this moment, uh, this moment is truly dramatic. So there are the Bishop Conferences of Africa, a good part of the Bishop's Conferences of Eastern Europe, that are saying precisely the same thing. The Hungarian Conference, which is not approving fiducia supplicans. In short, uh, also the, the Polish one, that of Kazakhstan. Then in patches, other scattered other conferences or even priestly classes, such as that about 500 English priests, about 50 priests or even more in Peru and in some other places, in the Middle East, in Lebanon and so on, if I remember correctly. In short, there's a broad cross-party opposition to the declaration. Notice that in the meantime, everything in Rome is going on as normal. That is what I find surreal, as if nothing had happened. I don't know if today or yesterday there was a meeting of the so-called Holy Father. I don't know uh, with whom. And, uh, and a certain Monsignor on duty was addressing him, the one sitting there on the chair in such an inelegant way. Announced uh, holiness, he called him. Holiness, I mean, really, look at him. It is surreal. We have a document that goes against the gospel. You cannot bless gay couples because God does not want to. I shuttered it out years ago. They're going to build an anti-church. Bergoglio is working on behalf of Satan. He is not the Pope. This is the false church. We are living through the third secret of Fatima. Padre Pio had said it. Come out. Rome is the seat of the Antichrist. Do not go to Mass with heretics. Do everything you can to avoid it. Please, I'm coming to Rome. I'm coming to Milan. I'm going to Latin America. I'm going there and everywhere. Wherever they call me, I'm going. Even if there's ten of them, I'm going. Please do not go to Mass with Bergoglio. Bergoglio is not the Pope. I told you. I told you so. I said they will build a gospel contrary to that, to that of Jesus Christ. 
in the face of this. How is this possible? So according to the Monsignor who says, Your Holiness, today there are prayer groups. But I say, but are they clowns? They are clowns. Your Holiness, today there are prayer groups in Rome. What do I know? These revere you. And the one sitting there like a proud man. But I say, are we kidding here? I can understand that uh, years ago, I could have been considered crazy. They should have thought twice before saying it, because now the unacum, that is those who consider Bergoglio to be the Pope, are in an unpleasant situation. Because they would have already been ready to make the leap. But then there is Dominutella. Acknowledging that Dominutella was right is too onerous for them, that they would rather be tormented than to say that I was right. For them, Dominutella should die, not Bergoglio. If Minutella dies, it'd be better for them. But Minutella will not go away because he has a mission to accomplish, the decisive one. Who knows? Only God knows. It is not that we, that we can back away, dear children. My cassock is always there in my closet. When we spoke of the great prelate, of the little remnant of Rome, the seat of the Antichrist, the Bergoglio is Satan dressed in white, seated on the throne of Peter. We didn't play around. You are not the Harlequins of Italy. I was not the Masaniello of Naples. And now, and now there is, uh, it's all for everyone to see because those who have a, minim, a minimum of dignity, I say a minimum because many there in the Vatican do not have it, should say, wait a minute, but this declaration openly goes against the gospel. All things in this world can be interpreted. The statement is there. You cannot give a blessing to gay couples. Could it be said that uh, it is the result of a broad journey? So then, there's an unveiling. At this point, if you agree, if you, if you do not, one does not uh, decide to drink oneself, to drink... Uh, to drink oneself crazy. Now, this is an unveiling. Well, people can say, well, I still want to stay with Pope Francis, even though I know that he has rewritten the Gospel. But Tucho Fernandez is a theologian who talked about orgasms and explained what happens to women and males when the two join carnally, without ruling out the possibility that two males can also meet, or two women. And therefore, we are at the uh, point of abomination of desolation. St. Peter's Basilica is dark and foreboding. It's been desecrated by Pachamama, Modus Letizia, in the Abu Dhabi document. What are they waiting for? For who and what? Blind. They have eyes and they do not see. They have ears and they do not hear. There is no intelligence in their minds, says the prophet. What are they waiting for? I would like to know what they're still waiting for. I'm not talking about the moronic Monsignor who wants to make a career by calling Bergoglio Your Holiness. Today they are present here in Rome. Your Holiness. That is, you call the Prime Minister Satan, the holder of Luciferian, of the Luciferian Antimunus, you call him Holiness? I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking about average Christians. I'm talking about those who have some common sense. What are they still waiting for? For Bergoglio to grow horns on his head? If his horns sprout, they will say that uh, it is the result of an illusion, of a hallucination. It is Dominutella who exaggerates. It is Dominutella who is exaggerating all the time. And this then, the false church is revealed. So one says, let's say... Um, Let's see, as long as uh, I, I don't want to follow Dominutella because he screams, because if one screams, then the, uh, ah, the voice of one crying in the wilderness. So St. John the Baptist is being deprived of his saint, uh, sainthood because he screamed. The voice of one crying in the wilderness. John the Baptist is thus, uh, is thus declared the voice of one who cries in the wilderness. And you know what other things they've said about me over the years. 
Well, I don't want to hear about Dominatello, one might say, no, although he's right. In fact, I think of a serious, dignified person. What can they say to him? But what can I, who can stay one more, who, who can stay one more minute with the false church? He was right, but I don't fit in. Let's, let us see where I can go. In the little Catholic remnant? Never. I won't go to the little Catholic remnant. I don't want to hear about this Domin Nutella. He's mad. He's possessed by the devil. He's greedy. He goes after women. He's depraved. He deserves to be consigned to a mental asylum. He is a heretic. He is excommunicated. I'm not going with him. So we'll go with Vigano. Here is the other step, because the alternative for a long time, if you think about it, seemed to be Carlo Maria Viganò. We have lost a considerable catchment area, let's call it that, because those who were dissatisfied with Bergoglio, not wanting to recognize in Dominutella the chrism and charism of truth, while in the false church, as if nothing had happened, holiness here and holiness there, they celebrate. Next year, if I remember correctly, in 2025, there will be the jubilee of the Archbishop Fisichella, uh, which is really, look, I... I, I don't want to use pejorative adjectives. Archbishop Fisichella, you see, an adherent to the uh, theories of von Balthasar. If he is the organizer of the Jubilee, as if nothing had happened, that is, he has built himself a, uh, an anti-church. But this is what the, Reve the book of Revelation said, an anti-gospel, an anti-church, an anti-liturgy, an anti-pope that have been constructed. Everything is anti. There is the Antichrist now who arrives and he, as if nothing had happened, like the Titanic that went down, who were, during the, the time that it was going down, the orchestra was playing, and people died while the orchestra was playing because they didn't want to contemplate the imminent disaster. The ship was sinking, and the captain had ordered the dinner menu to be passed around to the guests in first class because they didn't want to contemplate their imminent death. And in the meantime, those of the third class were dying. And so is the Bergoglio in Catholic Church. You die, but the Catholic Church is unrecognizable. It's truly unrecognizable. That is, um, we simply cannot recognize it anymore since Bergoglio came on the scene. It is useless for them to say it is a result of the Vatican Council II. Certainly, Vatican Council II created problems. I'm, I'm authoring a book on this, but I'm precise. There is no continuity. It's not even a consequence of what came before. No, absolutely. That is, with Bergoglio, we're in the presence of an atmosphere. I'm talking about it, uh, as the French would say, of a milieu. The climate, the atmosphere inside Roman Catholicism is suffocating. Those who leave do well because you cannot last a minute longer if you're a man of conscience. In a moment, I will read uh, uh, what a guy writes to Aldo, Aldo Maria Valle. And so, there's half the Episcopate that rebels and says, we are not going to apply fiducia supplicants, as if nothing had happened. Ah. You don't apply it? Oh well, we in Europe uh, do it, in France and Italy as well. I told you so. I told you so. It is a time of unveiling of the truth. The facts prove us right. They didn't want to listen to me. They all jumped on me. Even today, someone, somewhere among the lofty scholars and writers of traditional Catholic uh, uh, thinkers, I'm called a cult leader, a sectarian, one who blocks people from getting the sacraments. Apparently, I'm one who created my own church. What wretches! What, ch what church do I have? What is the point of making my own church? Why should I make my own church? I warned about Bergoglio because it was revealed to me and they didn't want her to believe me when none of you uh, would suspect that Bergoglio was not the Pope. And moreover, he was Satan's master builder sent by the devil to fulfill the prophecies. He's an unscrupulous man. He has not stopped. He's not finished his work yet. The hatred that that man has for the Catholic Church, for Rome, I don't know if you understand me, this reflects hatred for Christ, as when St. Paul persecuted Christians in Damascus. He has not finished his work. I could be telling you his next moves, but I won't. I won't. To... Then one says, I'm, I'm not in the Catholic Church. I'm turning to Monsignor Carlo Maria Veganò. Yes, Monsignor Carlo Maria Vigano is a bishop. He's been using this advantage for a couple of years. I warned uh, against him as well. I said, be careful. Don't trust them. You'll see what comes out. Be careful. Be wise. Oh, I was said that, I'm, that I was proud. You're, you're messing up people. What did Archbishop uh, Vigano do? 
which could have been, say, the alternative for some. He made his own church. He did. So they tell me that I've been, uh, I've been, I've done nothing on my own, in the sense that everything I do, I put at the disposal of Roman Catholicism up to Benedict the Sixteenth. While Monsignor Vigano, no less, uh, then had himself reconsecrated as a bishop. This is the time of unveiling. Archbishop Vigano's reconsecration equates to fiducia supplicans from the other extreme of the totem pole. So what is left? Chaos reigns in Rome, in Roman Catholicism. And here we are. I'm here in the prov province of Palermo. Those who are listening to me can be in Milan, in Turin, Naples, Rome, Cagliari, Florence, Verona. But think of a Catholic church from Hong Kong or Buenos Aires or Canberra or Wellington in New Zealand. That is, I mean, thousands of miles away from Rome, who hears and sees all this. I read some statistics on membership in the Church of Rome. It's plummeting. Absolutely collapsing. The convents are empty. There are no vocations. Many religious orders, even glorious ones, are about to be shuttered. That is, they're about to die. If they, if they are not already uh, dead altogether. The seminaries, the seminaries are closed. The churches are empty. St. Peter's Square is deserted in some regions of the world, such as Latin America. Catholics are leaving en masse. I've been saying this for a couple of years. So the Pentecostal churches, where they feel more welcomed, where there's not the chaos that there is in Rome, because obviously Rome is targeted by the Antichrist. And then I would uh, like to tell you, even on balance to your children, what does Rome offer at this moment? Total confusion. That is, what, a, what a, can a Roman Catholic faithful to the Pope say about himself before those who are not Catholics? Can you really have that, say, that, that pride, as the English call it, that pride in the non-negative sense of the word? He cannot have it because he's being challenged. You have the uh, scandals of pedophilia in the priesthood. You have the corruption of priests. You have uh, other sex scandals. You have the serial rapist, Father Rupnik who forced many nuns to perform perverted sexual acts, uh, who went unpunished. You see, Bergoglio promised a trial, and, and where did this lead to? What about the scandal of the Holy See's purchase of a multi-million dollar mansion in Rome? The Vatican Secretary of State, who detaches himself, as we have said, from Bergoglio, and therefore opens big fissures like this. The Synod that talks about things while the church sinks. They are talking about the blessings of gay couples, the women at the altar, the priests uh, priest that can get married, and the empty churches. The parish priests read these things here, read these things here all day long, then they go say mass. If it were not for four or five old ladies who believe that Pius X is still alive, if you don't explain to them that, that he's no longer St. Pius X, they will not believe it. You must show them the picture of Pope Francis and say, look, We've, we've updated ourselves a bit. There was a second Vatican Council. I'm not joking. That is how it is. Parish priests survive. I, from personal experience, was happily a parish priest. Happily a parish priest. In the last parish that uh, was taken from me, they'll give you an account uh, to God of this, it was taken from me because of the truth that I shouted. The bishops succeeded to denigrate me, to take revenge on me, because uh, I asked myself, why do I generate such hatred from all sides? It is the devil who instills it to hinder my mission. I tell you, be on your guard. It is the devil who annoys you, who foments hatred towards Dominatella. Well, after they kicked me out, they sent, me, they sent two priests to hold my parish, a permanent deacon and a seminarian. They did not know what to do. One of them wrote to the bishop, Please, will you give me another assignment because I'm getting bored here. Because the church, after I was kicked out, was empty. That is, he who sows the wind reaps the whirlwind. And I remember the first years they organized diocese and events in that parish to show that it was full. They had this anger to show that they could fill the church without me. It was always empty, however. 
Now I'm told it is always closed. The churches are empty, Catholicism is extinguished. The faith is no longer understood. As it is, a magisterium that has been built up, that Bergoglio openly defies. Openly. It is not that uh, there is now, what, a modus letizia? We're still circling around, but now it is directed. That is, it is direct. Monsignor Viganò was reconsecrated bishop. It is clear that if there is a serious Catholic, just as he can no longer be with Bergoglio and the porno theologian Fernandez, he can no longer be with the schismatic bishop who incurs excommunication, la te sentencia, because he considers invalid the consecration made to him by the imposition of the hands of Saint Pope John Paul II. What is left then? What is left? What's, what stays is what a man wrote to Aldo Maria Valli. This letter that Aldo Maria Valli courageously wanted to publish caused a big stir. I wanted to read it to you. I'm reading it to you because it takes the pulse of the pitiful condition in which the Unakum are, because they do not realize that we are now at, at a dead end. They are in disarray. The only solution is to recognize that Benedict XVI was in an impeded sea. He did not relinquish the Petrin Munis. I'm authoring a book in which I demonstrate the fatigue and suffering and martyrdom of the popes from Paul VI to Benedict XVI to guard the Munis from aggressors. First, first amongst these was Paul VI, how that man suffered, because it was the first aggression. In 1970, he was the victim of an assassination attempt. His robe was stained red like that of, of John Paul II. Few people know about this. And Bergoglio has arrived, who does not have the Munus. He has the anti -munus. He is seated there on behalf of the devil. The vision of Leo XIII and the third secret of Fatima is being fulfilled, that of a false pope, false pope on behalf of Satan, who sits on the throne of Peter. Anyhow, the letter is quite long. I won't uh, read you all of it. I'm heading towards the end. Uh, so this man, whose name is uh, Fabio Battiston, I don't know who he is, sent uh, this letter 13 hours ago entitled has the time come? Has the time come? It is interesting. If the time has come, was Don Minutalo right or, wrong or not? This is the step they must be able to take now. It is God who allows it. Do you realize that the time has come? You must have the humility to recognize, whatever you think, whatever you think of Don Minutella, that he was right. Is it time? That's why I'm thinking of getting excommunicated. This is one of the members of the so-called Unacum. You should see the messages. Let us go to the end, because otherwise we will not finish it. As if all this were not enough, here are the, he says, uh, summing up what is happening at the moment, the chaos in Rome, of which I speak. Here's another uh, cyanide pill with the revelation of another uh, literary feat of Tuccio. As is alias Don Rocco Ye Sifredi from Algira, Cigena with a super exciting mystical passion. I mean, it would be Fernandez uh, with, uh, on this last nefariousness, I open an immediate close the parenthesis and then move on to the question that interests me the most. The book in question and its contents, paradoxically, do not constitute the most fundamental problem. The existence of the text is the finger uh, that we are all anxious to observe. The moon, on the other hand, is somewhere else. It lies in the fact that at a distance of 72 hours from the news of the pornographic book, no kind of censorship uh, measure has been taken, announced or simply invoked within the Holy See. He's an unicum, and he writes, in order as the prefect of the dicastery for the doctrine of the faith, president of the Pontifical Biblical Commission, and of the International Theological Commission. Finally, also Archbishop Emeritus of La Plata. Uh, the moon, again, lies in the fact that the godfather of Santa Marta, so diligent in pronouncing and implementing the fiducia supplicans, amongst others, uh, Bishop Strickland and Cardinal Burke, do not mention a shred of anything about the story and its protagonist. In short, it is a trivial. It's not a trivial matter. It's a scandal. The porno theologian is a scandal. As he is a scandal, uh, Rupnik, Bergoglio does not care. He has the power, the non-human, preternatural power. He knows what he keeps, uh, and the unicum in check. And he keeps them in check when they say in union with Pope Francis. He can. This, he can do this. Whatever. Whatever he wants, he can do. 
When could a pope ever have been silent about the porno theologian, uh, prefect of doctrine of the faith? What are we talking about? The prefect of the faith, a porno theologian, and Father Rupnik got away with it after raping, I don't know how many nuns, without their consent, of course, forcing them to engage in veritable satanic rites. What are we talking about? What else do they want to understand about Bergoglio? No, he has boundless power. This power keeps them in check. He dominates them. He subjugates them with his preternatural powers. And if one or two or three or a couple thousand escape the power of the false prophet, they pay for it with excommunications and condemnations and with a life that becomes abnormal. There, therein lies Satan. Let us finish reading. In short, uh, the picture adds uh, this Battiston is as gloomy as ever. In any case, I, I thank the courage of Aldo Maria Valli. I'm sorry that this episode is going live on Facebook. I would have liked to reach who knows how many, but if possible, let this catechesis pass. Let this catechesis, which is so fiery tonight, uh, keep on spreading it on social media. In short, the picture is as gloomy as ever, almost funereal, perhaps irreversible. All this is progressively pushing me towards a decision that I had privately mentioned a few days ago to Aldo Maria Valli, commenting on the affair of the parish priest of Livorno, Father Ramon Guidetti, and which I do not intend to go into the specific merits, of the It's Better Not to Talk About Dom Nutella series, you see? That is where the trouble lies. That is the point. We continue. I am speaking of a public act. This is what we, have to, we would like to do. Made in front of one or more priests or a bishop, with which to openly disavow Jorge Bergoglio as Pope, while at the same time manifesting my total refusal as a believer to accept with obedience any of his acts, declarations or documents, even if it were the content of an ex cathedra prelusion the goal of all this, that of automatically obtaining excommunication from this cabal of heretic criminals. And sorry, Battiston, uh, you don't want to quote me, you pretend that I do not exist, like most of you, but you are saying exactly the same things I said years ago. It's not that there's anything to argue about. Uh, 2 plus 2 equals 4. You are saying those things that I talked about years ago and for which I thank God I'm already excommunicated. In fact, I'm excommunicated twice. He continues, I'm not a theologian or an expert in juridical canonical questions. I'm a simple and sinful apostolic Roman Catholic. I don't even know uh, if this is the technically right way to achieve my goal. On the other hand, I already know that many, including priests and lady, will smile ironically when commenting on this possibility. They will judge it to be naive, childish and contradictory, an oxymoron. Some perhaps will go so far as to, s to consider uh, it is the uh, choice of a madman. As far as I'm concerned, I can't see more effective and radical solutions. This look is the unfortunate outcome for the unicum. It is their inevitable outcome. They have understood that there's no way out. They have understood that by continuing to commune with Bergoglio, they end up on the brink of hell. For this individual, I feel the pain. I'm on his side, even if he obviously does not mention me. He could have said, uh, this by the way, Don Minutella says, however, I'm I'm on, um, I'm on his side because I understand that he feels conflicted in his conscience to move forward in union with Pope Francis. So he prefers, he says, to be excommunicated. I don't know if you realize it, but a year ago, this was still unthinkable, reading these things here. Did you have, uh, did you have to come to this uh, to understand it? Anyhow, the, the prophets are never listened to. And now comes the best part because he says, because after Bergoglio, there will be others. Excuse me, uh, who was the first to say that? Do you remember what I said to you? They want an impeachment. The Unicum are convinced because Monsignor Schneider, Cardinal Burke, Cardinal Sarah, uh, they all make them believe, these poor Unicum brothers, 
that uh, oh oh don't worry it's not the it's not that Pope Francis will live forever as soon as he dies or resigns we will play our game to elect a moderate Pope there won't be a Francis 2.0 or a John the 24th uh, Pius the 13th will re, will reemerge that is a Pope who is a restorer a moderator now the Unicum I've been saying this for years are realizing that their dreams are broken they realize Bergoglio sent out a noticeably clear message. He says, I am not afraid of you. You are under my power. When you commune with me, you give me strength. It is you who uh, give me strength. Attack me as much as you want. It's you. Uh, when you go to Mass, you do a diabolical rite. Do I have to say it? Is that so? They are realizing this too late. That name is not to be said at Mass, that of Bergoglio. God turns his face away. There is nothing there. There cannot be the acting cause, which is the Holy Spirit. Even if there is the instrumental cause, the matter and the form, God does not allow himself to be constrained by rules. That is the church of the Antichrist, the mystical body of the Antichrist, as it was called by Bishop Fulton Sheen. How can there be the action of the Holy Spirit? But it is precisely for this reason that Bergoglio is gaining strength. Look, he gets strength from, from that. The, the adenochrome, you remember, the uh, American actors and politicians seem to have gained strength from being injected with the pure blood of children, and therefore a longer life uh, that is energy. It is, uh, it, is, it is something very satanic. And there, it is not uh, adenochrome, but it is them saying, in union with our Pope, and he gains more strength. In Lourdes, they cry out, let us pray for the attentions of, Saint, of uh, Pope Francis, and therefore he gains more strength in Lourdes. All over the world people pray in union with Pope Francis and he gains strength. It is a diabolical mantra that gives him strength, which energizes him. Then they understand that, however, after him comes the worst, uh, the worst still. After Bergoglio will come others, even more cruel and satanic than him. Father Muntel has been saying this for years. In the ranks of the service of this new monstrous secular relativist and nail pagan doctrine will increase out of all proportion. And in the meantime, our earthly life will end. I do not want them to end with, uh, with their paternal blessing. Aldo Maria Valli's dystopian The Last Battle has been, un unfortunately and repeatedly, incredibly contradicted by reality. For all this and much more, I am becoming increasingly convinced that the road to a, co a concrete possibility of salvation is the one that passes through a place called excommunication. This is a masterful text that should be preserved because it is a, uh, a change of course. We should have, we have time, but we cannot to read. We cannot have time to read the comments, some of which are nice and some of which are interesting. For example, certain, I read from the comments, uh, so it is not that a certain Gianni Crisafulli who writes, what if uh, we were to be excommunicated en masse? What do you think? Sorry, but look, there is a little Catholic remnant who has been excommunicated for years. You were the first to make us out as outcasts. Didn't they notice? Yes, they noticed. What did I say in Bologna in our international gathering? Did you remember? Be patient. Are we about, uh, were we about 4,000? We are crossing the Red Sea. Those who want to be saved behind us must come. Did they accept it? Did they not accept it? Too bad for them. It is not my fault. The Lord has chosen this way. Paul VI said it. A non-Catholic way of thinking is being imposed. A small remnant will remain. Bennett the 16th said it, we need the great prelate. Little by little, things are unraveling. We do not make them, as you can see, I'm not lifting a finger. I've only announced, and I'm, and I'm enjoying the show, on the right we have Vigano, and on the left I look at Bergoglio. A little here and a little there, I have two monitors here, I'm not making anything up. But I said it in Bologna on October 7, 2023. I said, children, we are crossing the Red Sea. Wait, it's a matter of, uh, of waiting a little. There it is. Let's all be excommunicated. Then there are comments that are, that are almost bordering on, on ranting. For example, the church is neither Bergoglio's nor Dominotella's. What does that mean? What does that mean? Uh, why have I ever said that the church is mine? Bergoglio said it. Bergoglio is changing it. Dominotella. But it is interesting because they are creating a polarized church which I have not looked, uh, I've, I've not looked for and which I've, I don't recognize despite, uh, despite themselves. It would be interesting to read others, others that give how to say that feel the pulse of the dramatic events of today, of the truly dramatic situation that we are now experiencing. 
we are at an increasingly, an exceedingly elevated level of confusion, in fact, of chaos in the church. For example, a, uh, a Lisa, I don't know uh, who she is, writes, uh, good, then maybe, then we, uh, you know, he will be able to dialogue with Don Alessandro. Oh my word, oh my word, one writes, uh, I know it is funny, then it becomes funny. I cannot read some people's comments because I'm censored and banned from speaking. They write the worst of the worst about me. And in short, dear children, this is the situation. Official Catholicism is now on the verge of collapse. There is uh, total chaos. There is no other alternative. It is what Our Lady foresaw. The prophecies are being fulfilled. The boat is sinking and there are not enough life rafts. The only raft that will bring you to safety is a little Catholic remnant. So say the prophecies. Thus, God has ordained it. This is what Our Lady is doing. Get over it. Jump into this raft with Dominutella, because there are no other alternatives. Benedict XVI was the Pope. Bergoglio has never been the Pope, not for a single minute. He is the holder of the Antimunus. He is the founder of the false church that was predicted by the prophecies. Anyone who is in communion with him for a single moment risks eternal damnation. Praise be Jesus Christ and forward with Mary.